Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. As I mentioned, the purpose of the channel is really to give some perspectives on early retirement, both and from the financial perspective, as well as just living life on a day-to-day -day basis uh, perspective. Uh, but before I go any further today, I ask that you please hit the like button on the channel, hit the subscribe button on the channel. Let me know you're thinking about me. Leave a note in the comments if there's anything that you find interesting in any way. And with that being said, let's get into it. So today, I just want to talk about 10 observations that I've made since uh, I retired. And again, I've been retired now for just over six months, and I'm loving every minute of it. But I want to let you know exactly what it is that I'm, that I'm loving about it, because I, I know that a lot of you are probably on the fence. You think you can do it, the dollars are right, but you're wondering, what am I going to do with all of that time? How am I going to fill my time? Am I going to be fulfilled? Am I going to feel the same uh, sense of purpose that I had when I was working? Um, I hear about people having uh, mental health challenges and so on. And while I can't speak to your specific circumstances uh, based on your unique set of, of, of situations, I do want to talk to you a little bit about 10 things that I experienced during, during up to this point in early retirement that I think may resonate with you. So I have notes here that I'm going to read from, but I want to just kind of talk about each of them. Number one, um, the most important is my sleep patterns changed. I've always been an individual that gets up early. I'd get up at five, six in the morning, and I'd, but I'd be in bed by about nine o'clock and trying to do everything I can in that 10, 12, 15 hour, 14 hour period, whatever the time is you do the math. But just trying to get everything in. But at the end of the day, I was so wiped out. Now, I don't wake up until about 8, 30, 9 o'clock, like clockwork every morning. But I'm up till midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning, sometimes doing piano practice, sometimes watching YouTube videos, creating YouTube videos, sometimes talking to my wife, and sometimes just decompressing from a day of activities, a bunch of things that I did. But it's interesting because without that pressure, it really takes a load off, and I'm I'm and I'm getting a lot more in the day. Um, number two, my thoughts are clear. I don't think I could have ever done a YouTube channel with this level of detail while I was working. Not because of the time commitment, but because I didn't have the capacity mentally to be able to think. I was work was taking up you know 10, 11 hours of my day. And then as soon as I got off of work, I had to decompress from work and I had to cook dinner. And then I had to figure out everything I needed to do for that day so I didn't fall too far behind in life itself uh, before I went to bed. And so now I have this capacity. I, I think more clearly. I have um, it doesn't I don't get lost in statements like I used to. I used to get lost in statements because I'd start a conversation. But like they say in the uh, one of the seven habits of highly effective people begin with the end in mind. That works in most situations, but when you're having a meaningful conversation with somebody, I don't think it works very well because you're not really thinking about what they're saying. You're just waiting for them to finish what they're saying so you can say what you have to say. And that's what was happening a lot to me because I, had, I, I didn't have enough time to clearly think about what it is that I was doing. I always felt like I was in a rush. And so now I have time on my, on my opinions. I have time to formulate grounded opinions maybe do a little bit of research and, and just try to understand things before I uh, say, before I respond or before I say, uh, speak my opinion on something. Um, and, it, and it really just comes from having more time to, to formulate those opinions. Um, I have the time to pursue some interests. Uh, you know, I, I used to always say to myself that if I won the lottery, I was going to do what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. And retirement really has allowed me to do that. I have one of the things that I really enjoy is I enjoy gardening. Um, in fact, today I, I bought some gardenias. Um, I bought an anemone, um, and I bought uh, I bought another couple of plants, and I can't remember not snapdragons, but something else, but something for the hummingbirds. Um, and I planted those. I was able to troubleshoot an irrigation issue I was having in my garden with uh, uh, with with my drip system. I had a a plant that a bird dropped a seed in my in my herb garden and i was able to get that out completely weeds and all and, and and get some things done in the garden and that was on top of everything else i did today and that was just one thing that i did today um but i, I have time to work on the garden 
I have time to practice the piano. Uh, I used to I used to DJ, and as a DJ, you're thinking about music, you're working on music, you're doing a lot around music, you're around musicians all the time. But the one thing I, I wish I was always able to do was learn an instrument. And the one instrument that I think is the is the basis or the the foundation for learning any other instruments are the piano. And so I've I've had the time to to start learning how to play the piano. I've got an app. I play the piano. I learn. I know a couple of songs, um, and hopefully by my wife's birthday, I'll be able to play a song for her on her birthday uh, from rote memory, which is going to be, you know, another another feat in and of itself. But I have time to to practice that and realistically do that. Uh, working on this podcast, working on the YouTube channel, I think there's there's opportunities to share my story. I've I've always been a person that likes to express myself. I, I had a good conversation with my best friend today and we were talking about being creative and I never thought of myself as a creative person. And he actually laid out to me how creative I am. And so now I have the opportunity to really pursue those creative interests, you know, with the YouTube channel and such and sharing some of that information and just expressing myself in a bunch of different, uh, a bunch of different mediums. Um, fishing. I love to fish, but as we all know, fishing takes a little bit of time. Um, I, but I'm able to spend some time, take out the RV, go fishing at the lake. Um, next week, in fact, I'm going on a, I'm going fishing uh, with some friends of mine, and we're going to charter a boat and go out on a boat. And so, if that's something that you might be interested in, in seeing some of those adventures, because uh, it will certainly be an adventure, let me know in the comments, and I'll make sure uh, that I, I, I purchase a gimbal and I take that gimbal out with me or a tripod out with me and show you some of those adventures. But I'll have time to, to do some more fishing. Um, and then golf. I, I, I love to play golf. It's, it's golf started for me as a way to break up the weeks. It's, I would, I would work and I would charge hard all week. And, it, and the only way I was able to not overwhelm myself was I had to have something on a Saturday or a Sunday that took me out of week one and brought me into week two. And golf did that. And so now that I'm not working, I have time to really put some more recreation to golf, try to get as good at it as I can and just enjoy being outside. So again, pursuing interest is a, is a big piece of, of, of what I've been able to do since I've retired. Um, you know, the other thing, number four, you know, vacations just hit different. Um, it used to take me, my wife and I would take vacations and our, and our baseline was a 10 day vacation. And it would usually take three or four days until I could get into vacation mode. Now I'm in vacation mode as soon as I get on the vacation. I'm able to go and I could I could see the sights, um, and I'm not in a rush to get everything in. I think I mentioned in an earlier video that my wife and I went to the Panama Canal. Well, when we were in the Panama Canal, we didn't have to rush to get to all of the excursions because for us, we can get to places that we like, and if we see places that we like, we're able to schedule another vacation, go back there, and just go to that one place that we want to see because there's there's not the rush. Um, you know, the other thing we, we joke a little bit about is that we're now in the in the era where we get free trips because if there's an oversold situation on a flight, there's nothing that's rushing me to get back by a period of time. So we could take our flight and say, look, we'll take a later flight. We'll get the um, you know, we'll get the free ticket or we'll get the voucher or whatever it is that they're giving away just so we get a free trip somewhere else, because we know we'll certainly have the time to uh, to to go to go someplace else. And so, you know, when you really look at vacations, it's, it's, it, it's, it's a big deal. And, and I, it's one of the, one of the other things I'll share with you is, uh, when we would vacation, my wife and I would have the same conversation at the end of every vacation. I would always go back to work the day I got back from the vacation. My wife would always take an extra couple of days and decompress for the vacation. So she would get a vacation from the vacation, so to speak, prior to going back to work. And so now we go on vacation. And when we come home, we were able to have fun on our vacation. And then we can come home and just relax. And so the vacation experience is completely different than it used to be uh, when we were working. And so I think you'll experience something similar to that. Um, I'm, I, on top of that, I'm able to spend more time with my wife. Um, you know, we used to have to divvy up what we were going to do on different days and at different times. And I was going to do this and you were going to do that. Now we run errands together. 
we uh, spend a lot of time together, you know, whether it's watching TV and, and not that we're particularly interested in any one show, but just spending the time together. We're able to talk about different things. We're able to talk about this channel. And I get her perspectives uh, on this channel because I will tell you that she is, I think, the singularly most intelligent person I know and thinks of things that I didn't even know existed and then become common sense once she mentions them. So, but again, I have a lot of opportunity to, to spend time with her. Um, the other thing I found, number six, is that my general health has just improved. I started to eat better. I have more time to go to the grocery store. I'm not rushing in on a Sunday night before the work week to go grocery shopping with a million of my closest friends. I can go shopping during the week. I could figure out what ingredients I want. I could figure out if there's a, if the meats at the grocery store, uh, don't taste or have the cuts that I'm looking for. I could go, I could seek out. Uh, specialty um, specialty butchers. Um, I have the time to, to work out and exercise. I, I exercise about five times a week. Um, and so I'm able to keep my weight in check. I'm able to, to just be generally more healthy. Mentally, I'm more healthy. My mental health is just incredible at this point. My physical health is great. Um, my digestive health is good. And I'm, I'm just feeling like a hundred bucks, a million bucks. I'm sorry. And I'm able to get the appointments that I need to get to. And, and most of those things that I need to take care of, I can just take care of during the week. So I'm not rushed. Even when I do go grocery shopping, which is usually on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, I'm not in a rush to get to the grocery store because there's only about 10 other people inside of the store. And so, you know, it's great. And so my, my overall health is just better. I've had the opportunity to research my health, spend time with my health. I've had a couple of appointments that I've gone to to make sure that my health was where it needed to be, had some procedures and, and things like that. And I, I don't think I've ever felt better, but I wouldn't have had the opportunity to do that if I was still going to work every day, because when I would go to the doctor or the dentist or whatever it was to, um, cause I don't get haircuts as you could see, <laughs> but when I would go and I, I would do these things, I was always looking at my watch, trying to figure out you know, where I was in terms of time and was I going to be late and what was going to happen with that. And so now I don't have that anymore. Time isn't really an issue for me. And I could get to the doctor's office when I need to get there. I could get to the grocery store when I need to get to the grocery store. I could do all of those things that I need to do in a, in a reasonable amount of time. Um, and number seven, I'm just generally more productive. Instead of trying, it's, it's funny when you look at the things that you have to do in the course of a day. Generally, it's like traffic. You know, if you take a bunch of cars and you put them on the freeway, then it's going to slow you down. Uh, getting to your final destination is going to take longer because there's too many cars congesting the freeway. Well, it's no different mentally. Uh, when you're trying to get a bunch of things done, you know, you get you get so busy that you accomplish nothing because you got so much to get done. And, and anything you do, do you just can't do well. Well, now I find myself a lot more productive. I have more uh, time to do my chores, chores around the house. I don't have to do everything in a period of a day or two. Um, and there's there's really no pressure to do everything at once. It's it's really a different. And I, it's interesting because I always thought that I'd be less productive when I retired because I'd have more time and I'd become lazy, but it's actually the opposite. Um, today I was able to get probably three days worth of stuff done that I would have normally gotten done when I was, when I was working. Um, number eight, and I, you hear this on a lot of different channels and I'll echo it here is that you just, you find that you spend less than you thought you were going to spend once you retired. Once I retired, I realized that I'm not spending as much money on gas. Um, you know, one of our cars is an electric car, so I take the electric car back and forth a lot of places. That cuts down a lot of money. My, uh, my golf is cheaper. Weekday rates are significantly less expensive than weekday rates. Um, you know, I don't have dry cleaning uh, as much as I did before. I used to have to dry clean my dress shirts and my slacks and all of these different types of things. But I don't have to do that now. It's 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 incredible. And you don't spend the kind of money because then on your downtime, you can just have downtime. You know, it's not as though you want downtime, but you have to go to work. And so you're gonna have to wear your uniform, so to speak, to work. 
that you're going to have to dry clean it and do all those other types of things. And so I just find that I spend less money on in, in general. Um, you know, there's there's lower stress. It's uh, I, I don't have any of the stresses that I had when I was working. I was really good at what I was what I did. I enjoyed what I did. I enjoyed pieces of the work that I would do. But even so, part of my role was to make sure that everybody else was okay. So when you're leading organizations of thousands of people, a lot of people have a lot of circumstances and situations. And so if you care about what you're doing, then it's going to create some stress. So there's a stress of that. There's a stress of getting the meetings on time. There's a stress of using the right words in conversations. There's the stress of managing people's perceptions of you. There's a stress of not wanting people to be upset. There's all of these different types of stressors. There's a stress of, am I working so much that it's going to damage my relationship? There's a stress of, I have this doctor's appointment, but there's this, this meeting. I don't have any of those stresses anymore. And so when I do sleep, I have these incredible dreams because I'm not burdened by the stress. And what's interesting is one of the things, and again, I'm not a physician, never was, again, and never played one on TV, but one of the one of the things that causes uh, adverse health impacts is the stress hormone cortisol, and so and it also causes you to gain a little bit of weight. And so I haven't gained any weight. None of the things that I thought were going to happen um, because of not working. It's it's actually the opposite, and it's you know I just I feel a hundred percent better. My friends, I c- I could actually feel when I'm talking to my friends that are working, and I could feel their stresses because I have a tendency to take on the stress of those people that I care about as a way to try to figure out how to help them. Um, And then lastly, number 10, you know, you start to see um, how many opportunities are really out there. It's pretty interesting because when you're, when I was working, what I saw in front of me were the things that were right in front of me and the things that were maybe, as they say in football, five yards out. But then I started to get to a point now where I could see, I have all of these opportunities. How can I say, I, I think I mentioned before that my personal mission statement is to uplift the human condition in any way that I can. And, you know, I look at people like Martin Luther King, Mother Teresa, Nelson Mandela, and say, you know, I wish I could do something that had that type of impact, but I just never had the entree into those worlds. So how can I do it? And then as soon as I retire, one of the things I see is one of the ways to reach a bunch of people is through YouTube. And so that became a tremendous opportunity uh, for, to, to help people on YouTube. Another opportunity that we, I found was when I grow vegetables in my garden, a lot of times, any of you that grow cucumbers know, or squash or zucchini, you know, you never eat as much as you grow. And last year I had 10 pumpkins that grew. There's no way we're going to eat 10 pumpkins. You can't even dice up 10 pumpkins or create enough uh put in, your freezer is not going to be big enough to carry to have the puree. So even if you puree it. So what we did is we found the opportunity to find the, uh, what they have, they call it a Sacramento uh, food pantries. And a bunch of cities have these food pantries that um, where you give food that you don't, that you're not using. And it helps people that might be underserved or might not have access to fresh food. And one of the challenges, you know, when you look at the social determinants of health, one of the social determinants of health is food insecurity. And what you start to find is like a lot of lower income neighborhoods, for example, don't have access to fresh vegetables, fresh fruits, fresh foods. And so we have the opportunity to give foods there. And it doesn't take away from anything we're going to eat because we're going to eat in abundance, but we could we could give it there to the to the food pantries and so on. So, you know, so you start to really seek out and find these opportunities to to be the best you. Uh, you see other things that, that keep an interest. One of the things I looked at that I thought was interesting is the grand jury process and how to become part of the grand jury and, and figure out what cases go for indictment or look at how different city organizations are run and making sure they're run correctly. So again, things that interest you that you don't have time to think about when you're working, you have when you're retired. And so those of you that are apprehensive about retirement, if you have the ability to do it now, then in my mind, it's a no-brainer. You should do it now because unless you told yourself when you were a little kid that when I grow up, I want to be an office worker for the rest of my life or I want to work for the rest of my life, then you're living your dream. 
but the 90% of you that aren't, this is an opportunity for you to be your best you doing the things that you love to do and really contributing to the world and making the world a better place. And so, again, I'd like to ask that you take a moment, you subscribe to the channel. If you like the channel, you hit that like button, uh, you hit that subscribe button. If you have questions, give me some questions, hit me with questions in the comments. And again, I want to go back to, I'm, I'm going fishing here in the next few days. Uh, so I'd like you to, to know if you'd like to see video from the, from the fishing trip. It's, it's going to be an incredible trip and uh, we're going to catch some, hopefully catch some big ones. And I'd love to show them to you, but I only want to show them to you if you want to see them because I don't want to waste your time. But on that note, I just say, Thanks again for, for participating, being part of this channel, and we will ca uh, catch up soon. Thank you.